Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the desert a wayfarer's lodging place, that I might leave my people and go away from them, for they are all adulterers, a company of treacherous men. They bend their tongue like a bow. Falsehood and not truth has grown strong in the land, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know me, says the Lord. Let everyone beware of his neighbor, and put no trust in any brother, for every brother is a supplanter, and every neighbor goes about as a slanderer. Everyone deceives his neighbor, and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They commit iniquity, and are too weary to repent. Heaping oppression upon oppression, and deceit upon deceit, they refuse to know me, says the Lord. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will refine them and test them, for what else can I do because of my people? Their tongue is a deadly arrow, it speaks deceitfully. With his mouth each speaks peaceably to his neighbor, but in his heart he plans an ambush for them. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord, and shall I not avenge myself on a nation such as this? Take up weeping and wailing for the mountains, and a lamentation for the pastures of the wilderness, because they are laid waste, so that no one passes through, and the lowing of cattle is not heard, both the birds of the air and the beasts have fled and are gone. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a layer of jackals, and I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitant. Who is the man so wise that he can understand this? To whom has the mouth of the Lord spoken that he may declare it? Why is the land ruined and laid waste like a wilderness, so that no one passes through? And the Lord says, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, or walked in accord with it, but have stubbornly followed their own hearts, and have gone after the balls, as their fathers taught them. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed this people with warm wood, and give them poisonous water to drink. I will scatter them among the nations, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send the sword after them, until I have consumed them. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider, and call for the mourning women to come. Send for the skillful women to come. Let them make haste and raise a wailing over us, that our eyes may run down with tears, and our eyelids gush with water. For a sound of wailing is heard from Zion, how we are ruined. We are utterly shamed, because we have left the land, because they have cast down our dwellings. Hear, O women, the word of the Lord, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Teach to your daughters a lament, and each to her neighbors a dirge. For death has come up into our windows, it has entered our palaces, cutting off the children from the streets, and the young men from the squares. Speak, thus says the Lord, the dead bodies of men shall fall like dung upon the open field, like sheaves after the reaper, and none shall gather them. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him who glories a glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, who practice steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised, but yet uncircumcised, Egypt, Judah, Edom, the sons of Ammon, Moab, and all who dwell in the desert that cut the corners of their hair. For all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel is uncircumcised in heart. Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, Learn not the way of the nations, nor be dismayed at the signs of the heavens, because the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the peoples are false. A tree from the forest is cut down, and worked with an axe by the hands of a craftsman. Men deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails, so that it cannot move. Their idols are like scarecrows in a cucumber field, and they cannot speak. They have to be carried, for they cannot walk. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither is it in them to do good. There is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is your due. For among all the wise ones of the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. They are both stupid and foolish. The instruction of idols is but wood. Beaten silver is brought from Tarshish, and gold from Uphaz. They are the work of the craftsmen and of the hands of the goldsmith. Their clothing is violet and purple. They are all the work of skilled men. But the Lord is the true God. 
He is the living God and the everlasting King. At his wrath, the earth quakes, and the nations cannot endure his indignation. Thus shall you say to them, The gods who did not make the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under the heavens. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he makes the mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and he brings forth the wind from his storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his images are false, and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. At the time of their punishment they shall perish. Not like these is he who is the portion of Jacob, for he is the one who formed all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Gather up your bundle from the ground, or you who dwell under siege. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I am slinging out the inhabitants of the land at this time, and I will bring distress on them, that they may feel it. Woe is me because of my hurt. My wound is grievous. But I said, Truly, this is an affliction, and I must bear it. My tent is destroyed, and all my cords are broken. My children have gone from me, and they are not. There is no one to spread my tent again, and to set up my curtains, for the shepherds are stupid, and do not inquire of the Lord. Therefore they have not prospered, and all their flock is scattered. Listen, a rumor, behold, it comes, a great commotion out of the north country, to make the cities of Judah a desolation, a lair of jackals. I know, O Lord, that the way of man is not in himself, that it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. Correct me, O Lord, but in just measure, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. Pour out your wrath upon the nations that know you not, and upon the peoples that call not on your name. For they have devoured Jacob, they have devoured him and consumed him, and have laid waste his habitation. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Hear the words of this covenant, and speak to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord the God of Israel, Cursed be the man who does not heed the words of this covenant which I commanded your fathers when I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Listen to my voice, and do all that I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your God, that I may perform the oath which I swore to your fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as at this day. Then I answered, So be it, Lord. And the Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Hear the words of this covenant, and do them. For I solemnly warned your fathers when I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, warning them persistently, even to this day, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but every one walked in the stubbornness of his evil heart. Therefore I brought upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did not. For your immortal spirit is in all things. Therefore you correct little by little those who trespass, and remind and warn them of the things wherein they sin, that they may be freed from wickedness, and put their trust in you, O Lord. Those who dwelt of old in your holy land you hated for their detestable practices, their works of sorcery and unholy rites, their merciless slaughter of children, and their sacrificial feasting on human flesh and blood. These initiates from the midst of a heathen cult, these parents who murder helpless lives, you wanted to destroy by the hands of our fathers, that the land most precious of all to you might receive a worthy colony of the servants of God. But even these you spared, since they were but men, and sent wasps as forerunners of your army, to destroy them little by little, though you were not unable to give the ungodly into the hands of the righteous in battle, or to destroy them at one blow by dread wild beasts, or your stern sword. But judging them little by little, you gave them a chance to repent, though you were not unaware that their origin was evil and their wickedness inborn, and that their way of thinking would never change. For they were an accursed race from the beginning, and it was not through fear of anyone that you left them unpunished for their sins. For who will say, What have you done? Or who will resist your judgment? Who will accurse you for the destruction of nations which you made? Or who will come before you to plead as an advocate for unrighteous men? For neither is there any God besides you, whose care is for all men, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly, nor can any king or monarch confront you about those whom you have punished. Look at what is before your eyes. If anyone is confident that he is Christ's, let him remind himself that as he is Christ's, so are we. 
For even if I boast a little too much of our authority, which the Lord gave for building you up and not for destroying you, I shall not be put to shame. I would not seem to be frightening you with letters. For they say, his letters are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech of no account. Let such people understand that what we say by letter when absent, we do when present. Not that we venture to class or compare ourselves with some of those who commend themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. But we will not boast beyond limit, but will keep to the limits God has apportioned us to reach even to you. For we are not overextending ourselves, as though we did not reach you. We were the first to come all the way to you with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast beyond limit in other men's labors, but our hope is that as your faith increases, our field among you may be greatly enlarged, so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you, without boasting of work already done in another's field. Let him who boasts boast of the Lord, for it is not the man who commends himself that is accepted, but the man whom the Lord commends. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. I feel a divine jealousy for you, for I betrothed you to Christ to present you as a pure bride to her one husband. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you submit to it readily enough. I think that I am not in the least inferior to these superlative apostles. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, I am not in knowledge. In every way we have made this plain to you in all things. Did I commit a sin in abasing myself so that you might be exalted because I preached God's gospel without cost to you? I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in want, I did not burden anyone, for my needs were supplied by the brethren who came from Macedonia. So I refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boast of mine shall not be silenced in the region of Achaia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. And what I do, I will continue to do, in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is not strange if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Both St. Paul and Jeremiah tell us in today's readings to boast in the Lord and not in our own wisdom, might, or riches. Jeremiah says that, instead, we ought to glory in the Lord who is just and righteous, and who practices steadfast love. What sort of a boast is this? These qualities would not look very good on a resume or college application. Nevertheless, the God who is all-wise and almighty and who possesses everything tells us to boast in his love for us and our love for him. We are being asked, therefore, not only to put aside our own pride, but also to change the way we judge what is valuable. God's steadfast love is, by his own reckoning, his most glorious quality, and so it should be with us. We are even told what this steadfast love looks like in practice. For example, despite the Israelites' repeated failures, God will not abandon them but correct them. The Book of Wisdom also tells us about God's patience in guiding everyone little by little. How can you imitate God's patient love, especially when you are serving as a role model, teacher, or parent?